What's up everyone and welcome back to Hate Watchers. We've got another comedy breakdown and review for you with episode 6 of The Wheel of Time, called The Flame of Tarvalon. Let's get right into the breakdown. Spoilers ahead. We start off heading downstream toward the Shire, where a strong woman in training uses magic to make her father look dumb with his one stupid hand, so he sends her down the river to live with the gypsies. Seventy years later by the looks of it, that same dumb girl all grown up is the leader of the Aes Sedai in the White City Academy and goes by the name Mother Principal. They bring in the false dragon reborn who hits on all of their insecurities when he reminds them that he alone took on nine of their strong women and almost beat them. They will remember that one man fought against nine women. For this insult, the mother principal sentences him to an eternity of detention, where he has to watch Barbie on repeat. Kill me. Please kill me. No. No. Kill me. Please kill me. The three main beezies get called to the throne where the principal lectures them, and they start backstabbing each other and getting real catty, culminating in Chipmunk Supreme ratting out Moraine's plan to hide wisdom from them, who may perhaps be the strongest of women ever. Moraine is told to get on her knees and relax her jaw as she receives the long punishment of justice from the mother principal. The mean girls meet in the hallway, each with their own backup, and Chipmunk Supreme says tomorrow, three o'clock, by the flagpole. Be there, nerd. Wisdom does a quick walk of shame with the town ogre. Moraine stops by the brothel. Go downstairs. Do not come up, no matter what you hear. And she ends up sucking the corruption out of Matt. Wisdom does another walk of shame with the ogre, but gets caught this time. Moraine heads to the bathhouse to wash the corruption off her face, where she's ambushed by a professional female rugby player. Moraine catches Egwene rubbing Perrin's unconscious, half-naked body, and to cover for her misdeeds, she immediately snitches on Perrin for being a werewolf. Lan, clearly frustrated, blows into Moraine's room and tells her that his protection of her comes at a physical cost, if you know what I mean. I can't protect you if I can't feel you. Then Moraine saunters through a portal into the mother's bedroom, where we learn that they're not only Aes Sedai mother and daughter, but also Scissor Sisters. On your knees. They have unsatisfying mechanical sex and then waste all their pillow talk on work, discussing the Dragon Reborn prophecy. The next day, Chipmunk Supreme tells Moraine she's a yellow-bellied chicken if she's not at the flagpole at 3 o'clock, so Moraine pleads with the ogre to back her up in the fight. Lan comes to collect the payment for his protection. It's time. In a surprising turn of events, just before 3 o'clock, Moraine gets expelled from the White City Academy after Chipmunk Supreme ratted on her to the Mother Principal about planning a fight. The Mother Principal makes her swear to accept this judgment on a double-sided justice stick, an object so terrifying that she shakes in fear of its potential use. Everyone shuns Moraine hard as she does her own walk of shame. She meets up with her crew outside of the Academy, and everyone is reunited, and briefly, just for a second, Rand forgets what a complete trash bag his girlfriend Egwene is. The ogre accidentally fart blasts the horses and they gallop off. They would not survive. Moraine, secretly in cahoots with the mother principal and still intent on finishing her mission, plans to take all of the potential dragon reborns to the eye of the world where the dark one is imprisoned, a process which should suss out who the real dragon reborn is. She gives a super inspiring speech. Whatever happens now, beyond our control. And like lambs to the slaughter, the group all pours through the way portal into the eye of the world. Except Matt, who decides not to take part in this suicide pact. And the episode comes to an end. Well, that was an incredibly slow 60 minutes. Six episodes in, we should probably be much further along in terms of the development of the main storyline and just intriguing events in general. At least enough to keep the audience engaged. But alas, the wheel of time seems to have stopped spinning once again. And I wish I had more thoughts or more of a reaction on Moraine's modern sexual ambiguity, but I really don't expect anything less with shows like this, so it doesn't even register anymore. No idea how this deviates from the book, but I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say it's probably different. At a minimum, at least the show got back on track with the main plot after completely abandoning it in the last episode. Comment below about 
anything you feel like saying, anything at all, because let's not pretend that this episode was worth discussing. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up if you liked the video, and subscribe to Hate Watchers for videos on the Wheel of Time as well as other shows and movies. Thank you for being suddenly lesbian with us today, and we'll catch you on the next one.